Huh? I'm Justin James, the Outlaw Knife Thrower. Um, welcome to the next installment of uh, the OKT Film Series. This is going to be uh, more or less a commentary of uh, why it is important for every uh, knife and tomahawk thrower at some point in their involvement uh, of this pastime, uh, why they should try to make a personal conscious effort and decision to attend some kind of event you know, that's uh, hosted by an organization that promotes uh, knife and tomahawk throwing. I'm not going to go in any order of importance. Um, you can uh, work this out in your mind of uh, what you think is more important and valuable to you. It's a matter of perspective, really. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the commentary. Uh, for one, when you go to these things, you know, um, the fellowship and the camaraderie alone of being around like-minded individuals that share a love and a passion uh, for this pastime is good. You'll go and make a lot of uh, lifelong friends and acquaintances at, at these uh, things. People that will follow you uh, through uh, the rest of your life as long as you do this. Even if at some point you decide to get out of it, these people will uh, remain very important influences in your life. Um, a lot of people that have uh, motivated me and inspired me to continue doing it, I've met at these events. And uh, quite a few of those folks, before I ever met them in person, you know, I talked to them over the phone, uh, via Facebook, through emails and stuff. And uh, it's just finally nice to get to meet people in person that you've talked to about this pastime and uh, people that have mentored you and coached you and gave you advice, you finally get to meet them in person. That's uh, it's an amazing experience to finally uh, get some time, you know, real life time rather than a computer screen or over the phone or through emails or whatever. But you're guaranteed to make some lifelong friends, some acquaintances, meet some really good down to earth folks that just enjoy and share the same love that you do for. Uh, the pastime. Now, um, not only that, you can go, there's a lot to learn uh, throwing wise. You know, uh, you can go, even if you don't go to compete, you can kind of spectate, just watch the event, just uh, kind of observe from the sidelines and see how people do things. You know, uh, not everybody does uh, the, everything the same way, everybody's different. So you can watch folks, take notes of uh, what they do as far as form, stance, uh, their technique, grip, and uh, etc. And uh, there are plenty of people there that are willing to teach and show you how to do things to maybe improve the quality of your performance in throwing. And if uh, you're not really there to learn how to improve on your game as far as the whole uh, competitive uh, target oriented aspect, you know, there are like I said, there is a cornucopia and variety of different throwers. You know, they uh, you can go and learn some new skill sets and techniques. You know, things like no spin, uh, alternative spin throwing. Just be meek and teachable and have an open mind going to these things and try to learn and gain as much as you can. <clears throat> now, another thing you can go and why it's important to go and try to attend. Let's say if you uh, you're serious about this and uh, you want to try to help promote it because that's one thing that does help this grow and gain recognition and notoriety and popularity is attendance. That's something that is really important. More people that attend, you know, it shows that there is an interest, a group and a following and a participation and that this uh, could be more than what it is because this is a really overlooked and underrated uh, pastime and it really uh, deserves more credit, notoriety, and recognition than what it gets. And it helps it grows. You know, there are more and more throwers coming out of the woodworks and shadows each and every year. It is building momentum and uh, participation and uh, interest and like and involvement is growing. So, let's say you go and uh, you have an interest in wanting to maybe start something locally in your area to help growth and uh, development and promotion of the, the pastime. 
these people um, that host and organize and run these things will give you pointers, advice, and tips on what you could do to maybe get something going in your local area. Um, I'm going to say if you do, with their help and input and advice, uh, do get something in your area going, uh, and you decide to uh, maybe want to host an event for people to come to and to participate in, they will give you all the uh, necessary knowledge and information that you need to uh, do an event smoothly, efficiently, and safely. You know, they'll give you the rules, the point scoring system, the formats for events, you know, just more or less the rundown and break it down to you. And uh, now if you're serious about these things, you know, you're a real competitor, um, you know, you spend countless hours on your practice range at home, you know, the true test, the trial by fire is the competition environment and atmosphere. It will show you exactly um, on these levels like your physical prowess, your mental ability to perform in this atmosphere and uh, whether or not your skills, the things that you're aiming to improve on that you've worked on, if there has been any improvement and progression. Um, I don't care and anybody that's done this seriously on a competitive level in nature will all agree on this one thing. It does not matter if you can throw uh, 290s to 280s in the uh, comfortability zone of your home range, you know, up on the range you practice. When you get in the competition environment and atmosphere, those, uh, those three areas will be tested. Your mental ability to perform under pressure and stress, um, your physical prowess, and uh, your accuracy will be tested. And um, if you are going to get serious about the competitive aspect of knife and tomahawk throwing and you want to go to events and compete, sometime sooner or later you're going to have to eventually go into some virgin territory and just get yourself broken properly. The more of these events that you attend, the more comfortable, the more relaxed you get. Uh, you get uh, more or less not so self-conscious about your uh, performance and your abilities. You know, it helps uh, get the mindset right. And uh, something that I usually do when I go to these events, um, more or less look at them as uh, large social gatherings of people that share a, a love and a passion for something. You know, it's it's really good. For one, I mean, if, if there's nothing wrong with being confined to your backyard, you know, just doing this for fun and recreational purposes, you know, some kind of form of stress, was it, stress release or zen to pass the time, but you'll never grow and develop like you ought to. Like I said, you cheat yourself if you don't go to these things. And you got the fellowship, the camaraderie of being around like-minded individuals, you can learn things, you know, how to improve your conventional competition uh, aspects and skill sets, add some versatility to your throwing styles and techniques, learn some organizational skills, how to promote, you know, to build growth, and um, see where you stand in the throwing community as far as uh, precision and accuracy going goes. So, with all that being said, you know, just meditate upon those things think about them. Like I said, no matter or order of importance of what I listed and said there. But um, I'm going to have two other videos come after this commentary. You know, just compiled clips that I've pieced together in the videos of events that I've attended. I've attended three events so far. Two International Knife Throwers uh, Hall of Fame uh, Championships. Those were World Championships. Uh, one in 2013, Blanco, Texas. And then this year, this past November, uh, 2014 World Championship in South Austin. Those uh, events, like I said, were uh, International Knife Throwers Hall of Fame. They were uh, organized and uh, hosted by Mike Alamo Baton and uh, his staff at the uh, South Austin Karate uh, Studios. You know, they, uh, they held and sanctioned and uh, ran those events and organized them. And the uh, the other event that I attended was in May 
Uh, Berwyn, Pennsylvania is an AKT event, which is the American Knife Throwers Alliance. It was a host and held and organized and sanctioned by um, Joe Dura and uh, Michael Rebel Jordan. So it's Joseph Broken Feather Dura and Michael uh, Rebel Jordan, sanctioned by Bobby Branton. Of, uh, he's more or less, the, I guess, the director or the president of the AKTA. But to sit back and enjoy those, just hope you uh, really like this series. Hope you get something out of it. And with that being said, I'm going to end the commentary and just uh, let you watch the, uh, the next two videos that follows. You know, thanks for liking, watching, and subscribing. And uh, keep tuning in and uh, throwing out, Law Nation.